Um, good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, I am Venetia Willis Holbrook, and I am the principal for virtual schools. I also would like to introduce Ross Smith, the ALE manager, Todd Dahlstad with Graduation Alliance, and Kevin Iketa from the assistant superintendent, the assistant superintendent of secondary. I also would like to introduce Leanna Albrecht, Community Relations Director for the district. Tonight, we are going to discuss what is virtual learning, what to expect from virtual learning, what virtual learning looks like. I hope this presentation assists you and your family in making the choice that best fits your students' needs for the upcoming school year. With a rigorous curriculum aligned to national standards, Graduation Alliance offers online classes aligned to Clover Park School District middle school curriculum and Clover Park High School graduation requirements. Graduation Alliance is accredited by Advanced Ed, the same nonprofit and same nonpartisan organization that oversees the recognition and professional certification of more than 34,000 educational institutions around the world. With state licensed teachers and courses that can be taken any time and from any location, earning credits with Graduation Alliance has helped thousands of students stay on the road to graduation without interfering with the student's job family obligations, or other responsibilities. If you are considering virtual learning, it is important to understand the model for virtual learning in Clover Park School District so you can determine if the program is a good fit for your student and for your family. Our program is a partnership model. The family, Clover Park School District, and Pearson work together in Graduation Alliance work together to provide core, elective, and social emotional learning. Student learning is done at home individual, independently with family support. Student learning is done independently, but each student has a network of support, including a Graduation Alliance academic coach, highly qualified teachers, a local advocate, 24 hours, seven day a week tutoring, career services, a Clover Park School District student engagement advocate, a laptop with Wi-Fi enabled. There are also opportunities to meet face-to-face -face with staff in real time. Students and families may choose to interact with teachers and staff, such as weekly academic coach check-ins, meetups online or locally with the student advocate support from district student engagement advocates, online tutoring, and family and student events hosted by Clover Park School District. The amount a family decides to participate in scheduled instruction is flexible, but students need to participate in weekly meetups and work on assignments daily. When making the choice about virtual learning for your family, it is important to consider your students' needs and your family circumstances. Each student is unique and not every student is successful in virtual environments. We, we encourage you and your family to discuss with your student what is important about school and how your student best learns. Some things we suggest you think about as a family are, when and where will the student be doing schoolwork at home? It is important students set and maintain a daily schedule to complete work and a weekly schedule to attend meetups virtually or in person. Another consideration is how your student learns. Some students work best when they are able to work alone. For some students, a classroom is an overwhelming place. Students who are motivated to learn but prefer to work alone are good candidates for virtual learning. Every family circumstance is different. Some families need the flexibility to have earlier or later start times or the flexibility to adjust the pacing of their students' learning. The academic coach will work 
closely with the family to make adjustments that align to Clover Park School District curriculum and graduation requirements. Students who struggle with motivation may find that an in-person learning option is a better fit. Now, Roz Smith will share information about what to expect from virtual learning. Roz, you're... Good evening. Let's discuss what families and students can expect from virtual learning in the 22-23 school year. Virtual learning has rules that must follow in state law and Clover Park School District policy. By signing up for virtual, families are agreeing to meet the requirements of this choice program. Students, with the assistance of their learning coach at home, must have an interaction weekly with the virtual program. Weekly contact can be one-to-one -one contact with the teacher, email with the teacher, telephone contact with teacher or Clover Park staff, and participation. Participation in the weekly meetups. Students are expected to complete course time comparable to their peers. Students attend school for 28 hours a week. Virtual students will have a learning plan that includes 28 hours. The learning coach at home will work with the Clover Park Student Education Advocate to adjust the learning plan if necessary. Students need to submit work that is representative of their skills and ability. Students should participate in state testing. Students also need to make sure that they have provided technology is used for school. Unfortunately, we are unable to serve students who do not live in the Clover Park School District boundaries. Families are an important part of the virtual program. Families identify and ensure someone is supporting the student at home as the learning coach. Families support the at-home learning coach in communicating weekly with your student's education advocate. Families are asked to participate in fall and spring conferences. Families are also asked to ensure that the at-home learning coach participate in monthly progress review with the student education advocate to determine if any adjustments need to be made to the learning plan. Families need to report student absences to the student education advocate. Students who are not completing assignments and are not meeting with the local advocate weekly will be marked absent and attendance interventions will occur. Students who are chronically considered absent will be referred in alignment with required truancy processes. Now let's take a look at what virtual learning looks like. Middle school students will complete 11 to 12 semester long courses during the year with Graduation Alliance. All students will take grade level English language arts, math, social studies, science, PE and health and electives. Students take one to two courses at a time during the year. High school students will complete at least 16 semester long courses. Courses are selected based on the student's graduation plan and high school and beyond plan and selected in partnership with their counselor at their home school. All high school students are required to meet Clover Park School District graduation requirements. Four credits of English, three credits of math, three credits of science, three and a half credits of social studies, one and a half credits of health and fitness, two credits of art, two credits of career and technical education, two credits of world language, 
and eight and a half credits of electives. Additionally, students will take coursework to support their non-credit graduation requirements, including high school and beyond plan and senior presentation, Washington State history, and a graduation pathway in English language arts and math. Students take one to two courses at a time during the year. Student schedules are built to meet the requirements to graduate with a Clover Park School District Diploma. Students may need to take coursework beyond 30 credits to meet the subject area credits and non-credit graduation requirements. Students who are credit deficient may need to enroll in Credit Retrieval Summer School or the Open Doors program to participate in virtual learning. Students will be provided an internet connected laptop by Graduation Alliance. Using the laptop, courses will be available in the Graduation Alliance online portal. Students have a dashboard that helps them navigate their coursework and keep them on track. Course requirements are outlined in the Graduation Alliance portal and contact information for the teacher and study sessions are available directly through the Graduation Alliance portal. Students can see at a glance everything required to complete the course and a course plan to ensure the work is completed on time. Course completion is required to maintain enrollment in the virtual program. Students who do not complete coursework will not be eligible to remain in the virtual program. Students not completing work will also be referred to attendance process, including community engagement boards and truancy referrals. Virtual students are welcome to participate in athletics and activities at their home school. Athletes must complete a form with their student engagement advocate and athletic director outlining required courses and due dates in addition to passing athletic clearance and grade checks to be eligible. It is important athletes let their student engagement advocate know early they are athletes so that a course calendar can be completed to meet state athletic requirements. Students are welcome to participate in after school clubs and activities. Students are unable to participate in elective courses at the building during the school day. Families and students are invited to participate in school events after the regular school day at their home school, such as parent nights, FAFSA nights, and dances. Now we would like to address some frequently asked questions. Can my student graduate early? No, district policy does not allow early graduation for students. Students will not earn a diploma or graduate prior to their cohort graduation date. Can Harrison prep students enroll in virtual? No. Students may not be enrolled in a choice school and a choice program at the same time. Students may return to their home school and then register for virtual. Can I attend if I move out of state or district? No, state law requires us to serve only students who live in the boundaries of Clover Park School District. Who do I graduate with? You would graduate with the home school you are enrolled with. Registration for the online option will be open through June 3rd via the online form found in the link in the chat and on the district website under virtual learning. 
Returning families who have confirmed their intent to return to virtual learning do not need to complete the form again. In-person and phone orientations will be scheduled through June 15th for families new to online learning. Kickoff meetings and computer pickup will occur August 15th through the 28th. Virtual staff will reach out to schedule your kickoff meeting. To apply for enrollment, please use the link in the chat or go to the district website under virtual learning. Current fam virtual families who have confirmed they are returning to virtual in the fall do not need to resubmit the survey. Here is the contact information for virtual staff. We are here to support your student. Information is also available for the website. I did see one question in the chat, and that was whether this is the same program that we offered during the current school year. And we are offering the same program that students participated in this year. Um, we did add some options for AP courses using a different provider for students who are looking to extend their learning beyond a um, traditional high school diploma. At this time, we will open it up for questions and do our best to answer them while we have you here. Please enter your questions into the chat. Do we have an example of a typical school day? Todd, do you wanna... Um, Give an example of a typical school day for a Graduation Alliance student. Yes, I do, if I can find the mute button. Um, yeah, students are gonna complete a number of assignments each day, like Ross said, uh, they'll be paced to participate in about 28 hours a week of school activities, including online assignments and attending meetups. Um, and so we do ask that we see students for at least a couple of hours each week during the meetup. So um, you can kind of schedule how that time looks, but you do need to participate for, a, you know, three to four hours each day. So we have a question. Can my daughter enroll in online if she's behind her credits in school? Um, we will review applications for students who are credit deficient or behind in credits, and we will make a recommendation for an online program that is the best fit. If a student is severely credit deficient, you will be referred to the Open Doors program, which also works with Graduation Alliance, and will allow your daughter to catch up on credits with a more flexible graduation plan. Another question is, how do I find out if my child needs to attend summer credit retrieval or summer retrieval credits? Um, the answer to that is you would check with your homeschool counselor or your homeschool administrator. Uh, if you have questions about that, feel free to reach out to Ms. Smith um, and she'll be able to connect you to the right person. The link for the application is in the chat. Roz, can you check our list for Anthony Webb? Yes, I just posted that we do have Anthony registered. Perfect. 
Oh, this is also a great question. If your child is receiving IEP, MLL, or 504 services, will you be able to get that assistance online? Yes, we do have opportunities for your student to receive that assistance online. Um, Graduation Alliance follows accommodations within student IEPs. And for students that have IEPs that cannot be met in the Graduation Alliance platform, we do offer um, a functional transition and life schools online program through Clover Park School District. Okay. Uh, when do virtual classes actually begin? We begin our orientation classes in August. So a student who enters into the orientation class will start their courses after their orientation class. Um, so once their laptop is assigned and they are set up with their coursework, their classes will start. Uh, if you want a start date closer to August 31st, you would sign up for the August 28th orientation. South Tacoma student can uh, a student attend school in Clover Park School District. So oh, I can answer it that way. you answered that one perfect. Mm-hmm. Thank you. If a student was virtual this year, but did not progress in their learning, will the district allow them to do virtual again next year? We are reviewing applications for families that are currently in virtual. If a student has been placed on academic warning or um, lost eligibility with Graduation Alliance, they would need to request, uh, do you wanna talk about the re-entry process with Graduation Alliance, Todd? Yeah, so if a student <clears throat> needs to re-enroll with us, um, they're going to have to uh, attend a meetup and complete two classes, um, as well as, you know, speak with our principal about what went, uh, what didn't work the first time through, and what's going to be different the second time through. So there, it's, um, there is some steps that have to be taken for a student to re-enroll if they have not been successful previously. So we would definitely be meeting with the family the student, um, and we would have a conversation with Graduation Alliance as well to see what we can do. Is it possible to join virtual after the year has started? Uh, Virtual learning enrollment is available prior to the beginning of first semester and at the beginning of second semester. So we are asking students to select their learning mode for fall and then maintain that learning mode for a full semester. Um, So if you're unsure, uh, the next opportunity to enroll would be in at the end of January, 2023. How is registration different than this year's school year's registration? Um, Will the resident school be contacted prior to the student starting virtual? This year's registration is different in a couple of different ways. Um, We have students that are returning to virtual learning and they will be um, continued in their program and maintained. Um, We have students that are on academic probation in the virtual program, and we will have those conference meetings with families and students. Um, We are closing registration earlier this year. So schools will have a list of students uh, that are ready to go for virtual learning in August at the end of this school year in June. Oh, this is a great question. Will our, um, would a student be able to do their daily work at any time during the day, such as break it down into different times, or would they be expected to sit through the whole daily course? 
So students are able to self-pace their learning. Um, the lessons are uh, video recorded, although the weekly meetups are live. So that's the only time that you would have a required um, amount of time that you would need to be there for, but you get to pick from several times and you can pick different meetup times and do smaller fractions to meet that minimum requirement. But during a normal school day, if your student is the kind of student that needs to have 15 minutes of learning on, 15 off, you can do that. Uh, if your student is one that likes to work at one o'clock in the morning, they can do that. So there's a lot of flexibility in the how with the lessons. It's the meetups that we don't have as much flexibility with, but there is still some. So I see another question. Can you use your own home computers? You are more than welcome to use your own home computers. However, we are unable to provide technical support for devices that are not Graduation Alliance or Clover Park School District devices. We can provide you login assistance, but we're not able to um, do any repairs to devices that are not owned by either one of our entities. And we're not able to um, remote in to make any changes if we need to, so. Anything else on that, Todd, as far as the usability of Graduation Alliance on home computers? No, it's perfectly fine. But just like you said, we wouldn't be able to provide tech support to a, <clears throat> to a home computer. Okay. This is a great question. We are not currently enrolled with Clover Park School District, but um, we do live in district. Will that cause any problems? Absolutely not. However, we do have to complete the district registration process prior to enrolling with Graduation Alliance. So on the district homepage, there are enrollment directions. You would create that enrollment account and make sure all your documents are uploaded. Then you would let your home school, um, whichever one you're closest to in district, know that you're requesting virtual. Um, and you can go ahead and fill out that form there. Um, and we'll know that you are looking to come our direction. Um, you would need to complete all the documentation pieces, proof of residency, required immunizations for enrollment into public schools or immunization um, waivers. Uh, so work with your homeschool and your homeschool nurse to make sure all of that's in place and absolutely not a problem. We would love to welcome you to Virtual Learning and Graduation Alliance. There is a cutoff for the number of students enrolling in virtual. At this time, um, we do. At this time, we are not at the capacity. So everybody on this uh, call, if you get your name onto the survey that I've put in the chat a couple of times, you'll be um, in the queue for registration. However, uh, as we get closer to the beginning of the school, there may not be openings available and we will run a wait list. That does mean that um, if you are considering this as your first choice, we do request you go ahead and fill out that survey so that your spot is safe for you. This is a great question as well. Can kids make up missed days such as on, week on weekends? Absolutely. So if a student needs to take a Tuesday off, by all means, they can work on Saturday instead. Um, there's a lot of flexibility in the how. What Graduation get, Alliance gives your student is a pacing guide for their course. Um, and then they give you a schedule of weekly meetups that you need to attend. So if your course is asking um, for due dates by a certain day, you can do them all at the beginning of the week and have a longer um, stretch in between when you have to do assignments again, or you can, um, you know, if you have an appointment or need to take a Tuesday off or just aren't feeling up to it, you can work on Saturday as well. So you have a lot of flexibility in the how, but we do have a three week window to complete those courses. 
Angela asks, um, how do students participate in after school activities? So you would maintain, you would still be receiving emails from your home school regarding the activities and events at that home school. So if it's an after school club, you would just make sure that you waited until the dismissal time to arrive into school. And you would check into the main office and go to the school event or after school activity you were attending. If you're an athlete, there's an additional step. You would need to meet the eligibility process um, through the uh, clearing uh, process that happens at the school. And in addition, we would have to create a WIAA alternative learning plan for your student that outlines the requirements for your student. Um, and that takes place at that academic eligibility that you see in the traditional high school and allows your student to complete um, classes at an individual pace instead of at a um, six courses at a time pace. Uh, and then once you've met the WIAA plan for alternative learning in place, and then you have also um, met the clearance requirements for the school, you would be able to participate in sports. Um, if you are already registered in virtual learning and you want to continue for next year, if you already submitted the return application, you don't need to do anything. However, if you have not submitted an application either in the last couple of weeks or now, please add your student's name to the list we have. If you're unsure, please feel free to add your student's name. Oh, and then I see that Roz is checking to see if your student is on our list already. Um, and then as far as dances, because that's another activity that um, we can talk about. Uh, if your student is interested in dances, uh, if they're offered uh, allowing, um, you know, COVID requirements, they would need to complete the dance contracts, which we would have copies of either at the home school or through the virtual program. And they would need to um, go ahead and turn those in in the same timelines as other students. Can virtual students enroll in Running Start? Um, virtual students can participate in Running Start uh, once they meet the requirements. But Running Start is not run through Graduation Alliance. So if you're enrolling in um, Running Start, then what you would wanna do is make sure uh, that you have a really solid course plan between um, Graduation Alliance and the Running Start um, school. Uh, typically it's Pierce for Clover Park School District. Um, and in that, we can't guarantee that those Pierce courses would be online. Um, many of the Pierce courses have remained virtual, but that doesn't mean that their all offerings are going to be um, not in brick and mortar. Are there other questions we can answer while we're here? Oh, really? Well, we really appreciate all of you too. Um, we really enjoy working with our virtual students and families. Um, so thank you for, you know, thank you for the, the love back. We always appreciate nice feedback. So thank you. I'm glad this presentation has been helpful. Um, and if you have questions for us um, outside of the year, don't forget that we're here to support you both on the Graduation Alliance side and on the Clover Park School District side. Um, we really have a network that's here for your students uh, and keeping an eye every step of the way. So um, we've had some really great success this year with our virtual students and we um, are really excited to see that continue. I'm 
going to give it just another second to see if we have any last questions. And if um, you've gotten all the information you need, feel free to go ahead and go. Um, we're not here uh, keeping attendance, <laughs> um, but we want to make sure we give it just a couple. couple of seconds so that everybody has their answers. So resident schools, Mary, will get the list of virtual students in June and then again in August. So Okay, well, not seeing any more questions. I'm gonna say thank you so much for attending. We appreciate each and every one of you. Um, have a wonderful evening and thank you for being a part of um, you know, virtual learning and a part of Clover Park School District. Thank you. <laughs>